Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. You're watching Alaska Weather with us on this 26th of November. Thanks for joining us tonight. Got a lot of important weather information to tell you about, especially the west coast and the northwest interior where snow is falling and the wind is blowing and coastal flooding is occurring along with some ice shoves. Uh, as always, you can get your latest forecast information anytime by calling the Alaska Weather Information Line. It works really well if you can't get a good internet signal. It is a free call for you in Alaska. 1-800-472-0391. Weather.gov slash Alaska, of course, is our website, but if you need a lower bandwidth connection that works on your mobile device, try mobile.weather.gov. That's M-O-B-I-L-E dot weather.gov. Type in your uh, location in the search bar and then save that forecast page to your home screen. And it'll load right up. It acts just like an app, but it's a web page and it works really quickly. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is how you find me. I'm happy to answer any questions I possibly can so I can better serve you any way I possibly can. Love to do it. Let's take a look at some of the weather reports we have out of uh, western Alaska at this point. Point Hope and Kotzebue uh, have been reporting wind gusts today in the 60 mile an hour range. Uh, Golovin, 63 miles an hour. White Mountain had a gust up to 60 earlier today. Tin City and Wales both saw gusts around 72 to 81 miles per hour. Cape Romanzoff uh, up to 67 miles per hour. And Cape Lisburn had a peak gust at 102 miles an hour today. So a lot of wind around this uh, Bering Sea storm that's still out over the Gulf of Anadir. On top of that, of course, it is snowing. Some of that is heavy snow, and the visibility has dropped down to below a quarter mile from many of these locations, and that puts that firmly in uh, the blizzard territory there. So a lot of wind rushing through there, no surprise at all. And here's a look out at Scammon Bay. Uh, this is a courtesy of the city of Scammon Bay, uh, that as that wind is working up across the Yukon Delta, uh, it has been pushing the ice inland, so we've got several pictures there this afternoon from the city of Scanlon Bay, and thanks to them for sharing these with the National Weather Service. And if you have damage, we encourage you to report that either to your local uh, village uh, uh, police or send that out to the Fairbanks uh, National Weather Service office. Uh, you can uh, simply uh, email them at fairbanks.weather at noaa.gov. And stuff like this helps us do our job better so we know how much that wind is working through your area and that damage uh, leads to a better forecast for you the next time for sure. So thank you to the folks in Scammon Bay, and uh, hopefully uh, this is uh, uh, not too bad as you're uh, kind of picking up the pieces there and moving the boats out of the way, but hopefully not a whole lot of damage. Uh, but uh, ice shove there in Scammon Bay this afternoon. The other part of this now is the wind, is the coastal flooding that we'll talk about here in just a minute, and of course the snow. And we're looking at uh, snow amounts there on the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range that could reach one to two feet from Ambler out toward Bettles and then down the Koyukuk and into the Yukon Valley. They're still talking about a half foot here around Galena to one and a half feet around Hughes. Tananaw looking up to a, a foot of new snow. Fairbanks, we're probably looking at this point under about an inch or so. Some of that may creep your way, but we're not talking about the really heavy amounts making their way into Fairbanks. As you move down the river into the upper Kuskokwim, one to one and a half feet of new snow around McGrath, Anvik, uh, still looking at some pretty high snow totals there. Unalakleet and Nome also looking up to about a foot of new snow. Winter storm warnings are in effect for this entire region through Wednesday morning at least, and in some cases uh, out into Wednesday afternoon and evening here. And all of this, of course, is coming with a very strong south wind, which could create blizzard conditions at times. But the flooding is also an issue. Along coastal areas, we're talking about four to six inches of snow from Point Hope all the way down through Kivalina, Constable, and Buckland, uh, out around uh, Shishmaref again. So, uh, considerably less amounts of snow. Uh, Gamble, probably about a, an inch to inch and a half. Out across the west, uh, one to one and a half feet of snow, though. So a lot of variation 
once you get outside of this corridor of very fast moving wind and high energy from the weather. Now let's take a look at the overall map here. We're going to start up north today. We'll get down to the south here in just a minute, but areas across the northwest all the way down the west coast, all under a coastal flood warning. Interior locations, of course, this is winter storm warnings there, so if you're in red, you're in some type of warning tonight. And high wind warnings across the eastern Alaska range and around the Denali region for gusts there that could reach 65 to about 80 miles per hour or so. And a high wind advisory for areas around the Deltana and Tanana Flats region for gusts up to 45 miles per hour. Now, for this entire region out in the west, snow will continue tonight and into tomorrow. It looks like you could see a foot to two feet of snow, especially on the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range from Ambler out to Bettles and down toward Hughes. That's where the highest snow will be. But some of that's going to creep down the Koyukuk Valley, so plan on some tricky travel conditions just in your local situation, not if you're even trying to get out and uh, head anywhere else, but just the local get-around kind of stuff is going to be pretty tricky for a while. The other thing to keep in mind is the coastal flood warnings all the way down to the Yukon Delta, uh, coastal flood advisories here for southwest, and high surf advisories out around St. Lawrence Island. We're looking at breakers there around St. Lawrence Island that could be on the order of about 12 to 13 feet. So that's going to be breaking offshore, but as that run-up comes up onto the coast, coastal erosion could be possible there, and that overwash will reach up above the normal high tide line. From uh, Utkiavik all the way down the Chukchi coast, it looks like we'll see um, uh, coastal flooding possibly around four to five feet above the normal high tide line. Into Kotzebue Sound and uh, Kotzebue itself, it looks like there will be some flooding in that area and we may see uh, water make its way up into the lagoons around Shishmer up there. So high water in the lagoons is possible with uh, uh, flooding up above four to five feet above the normal high tide there. Inside of Norton Sound, uh, it looks like we might see uh, five to six feet above the normal high tide line there. Again, the coastal flooding probably easing off as we get into early tomorrow morning. And the Yukon Delta also looking at about four to five feet above normal high tide. So coastal flooding is likely in all of these areas. If you're not seeing that yet or haven't seen it by now, it's still possible as we head into at least Wednesday morning, in some cases maybe midday on Wednesday before you see that improve. So a lot going on. Make sure you're checking the weather. If you're on the west coast or the interior west, make sure you know what the weather is going to do tonight and into tomorrow after you watch the show. Now out across the west, the western Susitna Valley at Chilitna and uh, up toward Talkeetna, it's possible you're going to see one to two feet of snow as well. You're under a winter storm warning at this point. And again, a winter storm watch here for the lower uh, Kuskokwim. And winter weather advisories here for the western Kenai you are going to see snow. It's going to start around the Homer Bluffs and move northward. And as that moves north, it'll probably snow in Soldatna and Kenai and gradually change over to rain as the day goes on. So it's going to start as snow working from south to north and move northward into the Sterling Highway Corridor and then switch over to rain. So it's going to be a messy situation. That's tomorrow. So make sure you have a good way to check the weather before you go. If you're driving up to Grandma's house in the valley, you better know what the weather's going to be like as you go over the pass, and it's not going to be pretty either way once this starts to roll in. Uh, we're also looking for a winter weather advisory and tricky travel conditions there around the Turnigan Pass area and the Resurrection Pass area. So plan on, uh, again, some tricky travel there for the Kenai Peninsula, north and south, especially over higher terrain, and again, watch for changing weather conditions along the Sterling Highway, uh, especially starting out with snow on the bluffs and then that's traveling northward into some of our more populated places there around the Kenai Peninsula on top of a winter storm warning there in the Susitna. So a lot going on. Of course, wind for the passes that I mentioned, high wind warnings there for the Denali area and the eastern Alaska Range passes and the Deltana and Tanana Flats region. So all that said, let's take a quick peek at the weather here. Here's that powerful low out across the Gulf of Anadir, a huge fetch of moisture coming up all the way into the interior, powering that uh, snow machine that's happening right here across the west and the northwestern interior and a lot of wind just slamming into the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula and the Kotzebue Sound region and also making things really choppy for the Chukchi Coast. Sitting pretty right now, breezy but not too bad, that's southeast, not a whole lot going on there right now so enjoy the calmer weather as you have it for the moment. Weather's also beginning to move into south central and again that should make for a burst of snow as this wave works its way into south central and into the interior. On the map, it looks like this, 960 millibars there around the Gulf of Anadir, a broad cold front all the way down to the west, and this very sharp transition zone is where we're seeing the snow. It's not often that I put the four dots of snow on a map, 
Uh, that simply means heavy snow is occurring there. Three is a little bit more um, toward the moderate scale, and two, uh, just a regular garden variety kind of snow happening around St. Lawrence Island. But not to be diminished at all, it's the wind that's really a problem in the waves for St. Lawrence Island today. And again, the ice shove uh, occurred earlier today around Scammon Bay right here on that leading edge of that wind battering the Yukon Delta. High pressures moving out. This could make for some breezy situations, maybe a little bit windy at times around parts of southeast. If you're in channel train, that wind's got to go somewhere, and it's going to work its way through those gaps and nooks and crannies of southeast. In the meantime, tonight, uh, high pressures working that moisture into southwest. We're going to see rain and snow across southwest. Uh, probably some freezing rain at times across the lower Koyukuk Valley, and then that quickly turns into heavy snow on the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range and blowing snow across the Brooks Range there. A lot of wind working its way across the Bering Strait and another surge of colder air dropping southward into the Bering. This is going to chew up a lot of that ice. The ice is on the move as we've seen in Scammon Bay. That's not good news for coastal ice at this point. And a lot of wind working its way through South Central as we go through Wednesday. Uh, that's really going to focus the snow right up against the Alaska Range. So Rainy Pass, Lake Clark, and Merrill Pass all going to get slammed with heavy snow as we go through. So flying weather, obviously, as you'll see in a minute, not that great going through any of our passes. But visibility will be down, especially through the um, uh, Susitna Valley. Talkeetna and then down toward Chalitna look like they'll get uh, a decent helping of one to two feet. As we get into Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, low pressure sitting across the western Gulf at 968 millibars. Southeast, you start to see some clouds, heavier rain focusing on the Prince William Sound side and into the Cook Inlet region, but snow it looks like for the Kenai Peninsula, uh, the Chugach, and many parts of the Alaska Range there. That heavy snow will continue. Another system is moving into the western Bering. This is setting up another wave working its way uh, into the west coast as we head into uh, probably Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So keep watch on the weather. Uh, blowing snow will continue across the Brooks Range, and heavier snow will be working its way toward the interior. Quick check of temperatures here. Teens and 20s for southeast. It will be cold and breezy for you. Teens and 20s for south central with rain and snow moving in. Still dry and still cold for the uh, Copper River Valley and parts of the upper Yukon. They're anywhere from 5 to 10 below. Uh, uh, teens for the uh, north slope and 20s and 30s for southwest as the moisture is keeping things mild. 30s and 40s for southwest tomorrow. Teens and 20s up north and 20s in the Fairbanks region. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And back with your aviation weather now. As that front moves across southwest and into the interior, and especially the interior north, we're going to see a broad band of IFR concerns developing and lingering pretty much in the same old spot. It does not look like this is going to come flying through to the east. It's not going to soar into southeastern Alaska just yet. We'll gradually see MVFR creeping across the northern Gulf and into northern parts of southeast in the next couple days. But for the meantime, the main focus is going to be across southwest and into the central parts of the Brooks Range. Now, the north slope will see hit and miss MVFR initially. We'll see some breaks across the bearing. The main activity here will be across southwest from Bristol Bay into the middle Koyukuk Valley, the middle Yukon Valley, and into the Brooks Range with some activity shaping up here across south central. Before we get a whole lot further, though, I do want to point out that, as you'll see at the end of the aviation section here in a minute, you're going to see a widespread area of considerable moderate and probably quite a bit of isolated severe threats again. Uh, under the same area here that we have shaded in red for IFR, just go ahead and assume there's going to be turbulence that reaches at least a moderate, probably a severe level at times in that area. So we see that on Wednesday afternoon, kind of expanding here across the west coast, Norton Sound, the southern Seward Peninsula coastline, all the way out to Nome, and across the northern interior, across the Susitna Valley, all the way out toward Tionic, and then across the Kenai Fjords into parts of Prince William Sound. Southeast still looking pretty good at this point. Uh, the upper end of the Tanana Valley, eastern Alaska Range, as well as the Copper River Valley, still A-OK. -okay. Mentasta Pass, in this case, would be just fine. By Thursday morning, IFR is spreading in north to south, all the way across uh, from Sand Point to Bristol Bay, King Salmon and Dillingham, all the way up toward Galena, and then east toward Fairbanks, but not quite. It looks like most of Fairbanks actually will be right there in the marginal conditions with eastern areas, uh, Eagle, Northway, all looking at VFR. Southeast looking at VFR conditions. Uh, just through Point Barrow and Utkiavik, uh, you'll probably be at least marginal throughout the day. Thursday morning, though, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse going down to IFR with Kaktovik soon behind. By Thursday afternoon, you can see the IFR area is breaking up a little bit, but we still have considerable marginal conditions across the west coast. Some breaks will be seen. Another wave of IFR will spread east through the Privlops and St. Matthew. Southeast still looking pretty good, but you'll start to see some changes around Haines and Skagway, Gustavus, probably not the capital city just yet. 
Here's your past conditions in detail then. Anaktuva, Connecticut Pass, we expect to see IFR throughout the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass also going down for Wednesday. Rainy Pass, instrument flight rule is expected for you. Windy Pass also expected to be IFR. Isabel Pass should see improvements throughout the day, pushing over toward a marginal level. Mentasta Pass at this point looks pretty good. VFR conditions should be okay there. Tanita Pass right in the middle at marginal levels. Portage Pass leans over to IFR as we go. And Chilkoot and White Pass at this point for Wednesday look okay. VFR conditions expected there. We've got a wealth of cold air around Alaska right now. The surface freezing line, though, surprisingly, is pushing northward into parts of Bristol Bay and also the Bering Strait. That strong southerly wind out to the west, though, is equally balanced by a strong northerly flow out across the Gulf. And that is pushing those upper level freezing levels further and further south. Levels there below Haida Gwaii, south of Haida Gwaii below 2,000 feet. The surface freezing line right over the Kenai Peninsula and Homer uh, slicing through the outer coast of Southeast, so most of the 49th state, with the exception of far southwestern areas, are below freezing tomorrow morning. Here's the icing potential, and now these levels there could be towing into the considerable moderate area. I was a little bit uh, conservative in how I drew this today. It uh, looks like areas above 2 to about 4,000 feet across the central and northern interior are uh, ramping up there, mainly because it's running into some drier air, but there's certainly plenty of moisture here across the southern two-thirds of Alaska, above 2 to 5, maybe even 3,000 feet in the south, and about 5,000 feet east of the Pribilofs. No significant concerns over southeast at this point. Our jet stream has a huge ridge across high pressure uh, across the Gulf, uh, driving in that strong southerly flow across the west coast. Wind speeds are 90 to 135 knots and a powerful Pacific jet raging across the Aleutians there and another trough across the west coast. So primarily it's the southerly winds across the west coast that are really ramping up the turbulence and the potential for snow in this region. Wind speeds anywhere from 50 to 65 knots across the west and southerlies banking into southeast at this point. Not a huge concern for strong winds there. Southerly winds across the interior, 45 to 50 at 3,000 feet. A south and westerly flow over Bristol Bay continues, 40 to 65 knots there, and west and northwesterly start to cut in across the southern bearing at 40 to 55 knots as we get into your Wednesday. So turbulence, like I promised, is going to be fairly widespread, considerable moderate in the orange here, located across the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys, all the way from Kotzebue, Shishmaref, Kivalina, down to Nome, all the way across south and west and across the Aleutians, at least below 4,000 feet, in some cases a little bit higher like we see in south central. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and we have a special guest in the studio today. We welcome Amanda Turborg of the Aviation Weather Center. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, thank you for having me. Amanda's flown in all the way from Kansas City, and uh, for those of you that don't know, the Aviation Weather Center serves the lower 48 uh, for aviators, just as the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit here in Anchorage serves all of Alaska. So I kind of wonder, what's the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City doing to help out Alaska, Amanda? Yeah, you know, we do a lot of collaboration work with our sister station up here. Uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of work, especially in the satellite meteorology. Okay. Um, in particular, we have been looking at ways to identify, better identify icing conditions in oh. clouds, um, which is a big deal up here because Very. as I'm coming to find out, even though I'm not from here, um, you guys have a lot of pilots here. We have a lot of pilots. In yeah. fact, it's, when you say you can't get there from here, that's how you get there. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so uh, with icing potential then, uh, what, what's Kansas City working on? Uh, well, we are working on something that will help us, again, identify the icing in the clouds. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want ice on your aircraft. No. Uh, not only does it add a whole bunch of extra weight to your airframe when it, it, it attaches to mm -hmm. the wings and the nose cone, but it can also mess with your aerodynamics. Right. Um, and in the most serious conditions, that can mess with it enough that you can actually crash. It changes the shape of the wing and that makes it sometimes impossible to fly, right? It does, yeah. So mm -hmm. we want to figure out a way to forecast, better forecast for that. Makes sense. Uh, now this particular image is over Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, the colors here are a little goofy. It doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill satellite image. Okay. Um, but the red is where you have liquid clouds and the blue is ice. But again, it really doesn't tell you a lot where you have icing conditions mm -hmm. in that cloud. Uh, because in those clouds there's little droplets and they're cold and they're actually below freezing but they're still liquid and wow. that makes them sticky. Okay. So when an aircraft flies through there, um, those droplets are sticking to the aircraft and it can mm -hmm. happen amazingly fast. Right. And so that's what we're trying to find. Um, and there is a product called the Aircraft Flight Icing Threat that mm -hmm. does this. Um, and it's basically looking at the temperature of the cloud, mm -hmm. and it's also looking at the size of the droplets to okay. identify a probability and intensity of those icing conditions. Okay. Um, and if you 
flip to the next image. Mm -hmm. um, this is a case from Juneau, Alaska, um, where this probably wouldn't have been the most, the best day to fly around Juneau. Okay. Um, now there was an area of moisture that pushed south from the southwest mm -hmm. up along the coast that pushed in a stratus layer, and in the stratus layer there was a lot of those super cooled liquid drops or a lot of stickiness. Okay. Um, and so the flight icing threat was able to, in the pinks and the reds there, was mm -hmm. able to identify where that icing was. Um, now this is really cool, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to identify that sure. there is, you know, of course, caveats to every product. Um, much as we wish it would, it would happen, sun doesn't shine all the time, unless, I guess, if you live in northern Alaska during the summertime. Right, right. Um, but we need that sun to be able to bounce off those clouds and to be able to see where those super cool drops are. Okay, so it's a daytime only tool. It is, course. yeah, okay. yeah. Right now, of mm -hmm. course, you know we're in the era era of advanced satellite technology, and there right. is a satellite that can actually use moonlight to see clouds. Yes. And so, sometime in the future, we hope to be able to do that. Okay. Um, another thing that is a bit of a challenge is multiple layers of clouds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only see so far through a thick cloud. Okay. And if it's thick enough, sometimes you can't see a layer of icing that's below there. Right. Right. Um, but even besides those caveats, it does. This product has a lot of potential to help out Alaskan aviators here. Well, it sounds like a really big deal and, and something that uh, forecasters at the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit could use probably on a daily basis and especially in the middle of a really big storm. Yeah, I would think so. Do you have a really good success story in the lower 48 using this tool? Um, you know, this is a, it's a fairly new product and so we're still evaluating it, but yeah, we've had a, a lot of cases um, where we have seen that it does, it does tend to capture those icing conditions. Okay, very good. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for sharing some of the very interesting satellite imagery and the tools that you're using there at the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City with us here in Alaska. Uh, people can probably find some of this information online, right? Yeah, um, here is a website here. It's a page from NASA Langley, and they have mm -hmm. this imagery as well as a bunch of other satellite imagery that you can take a look at. Okay, great. And I'm sure our friends at the Alaska Aviation Weather Center and the unit will be uh, using that in the, in the coming months there uh, with your training and your help there to learn more about uh, that tool to help Alaska aviators any day of the year. That's wonderful stuff. So thanks again for joining us, Amanda, and uh, we welcome you to uh, view any of our Alaska weather facts on YouTube anytime at the address below, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with a look at your sea ice, uh, we're certainly seeing changing conditions there around Scammon Bay, but the entire area really didn't get a good look at it uh, from satellite as we normally do with the Alaska Sea Ice Program to uh, draw in the areas of new ice there, but we still have uh, quite a bit of uh, high concentration ice inside of Norton Sound and in Kotzebue Sound, but we expect a lot of this will be changing thanks to the very strong winds working up through the west coast and through the Bering Strait. A little bit better look up here, uh, still high concentration ice across the Beaufort and some of that's still creeping around Point Barrow there into the Chukchi Sea, but no significant changes there in the Chukchi at this point. This is today's map and you can always check it out anytime you want at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. In southeast, breezy conditions, strong high pressure system here across British Columbia and the Yukon, all feeding out into the low pressure across the Gulf. That's got to go somewhere and it will be breezy at times, but right now no strong winds expected. Northerlies in the Lynn Canal and all the way down into Clarence Strait, you're talking about 10 to 15 knot winds and an offshore flow for now producing four to six foot seas. As we get into Thursday, a south and southeasterly wind starts to develop stronger winds as you head out into the western Gulf and 10 to 15 knot winds there with two to three foot seas on Thursday. In South Central, inside Prince William Sound, easterly is 20 knots and three foot seas, six foot seas on the outside with a 30 knot wind. 35 to 45 knot winds coming into the Kenai Fjords region as well as the Barren Islands, the strongest winds there, bringing up 17 to 18 foot seas on that 45 knot wind. Northeasterly is coming down northern Cook Inlet. 15 knots and 3 foot seas there, up to 5 feet as we get into your Thursday. And Thanksgiving Day produces east and southeasterlies up to 35 knots, 14 to 19 feet. Easterlies inside of Prince William Sound with a 7 foot sea and 30 to 35 knot winds across the north and western parts of the Gulf for Thanksgiving Day. Uh, for the southwest in the Alaska Peninsula region, Bristol Bay is looking at 35 knot winds there with a 8 foot sea, 13 foot seas on a northwesterly flow coming in. This is all behind the front. The front's working through right about here on Wednesday. As that presses eastward, a lot of wind will be moving up over Kodiak Island. 40 to 45 knot winds producing 22 foot seas here in the western Gulf. 5 foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait with an easterly flow at 25 knots. Becoming northerly on Thursday with storm force winds out across the western Gulf and North Pacific. 
18 to 21 foot seas here and 40 to 50 knot winds expected across the region with a stronger northwesterly flow working across the peninsula and 16 foot seas there on that 35 knot wind. For Wednesday across the chain, anywhere from 25 to 35 knot winds, most of these from the west and northwest. You're looking at 11 to 12 foot seas for most of the region, maybe 13 footers south of Nikolsky and Dutch Harbor and 15 foot seas out in the west. As you get into Thursday, a steady south and westerly flow builds ahead of the next weather system out here in the west. We talked about that at the top of the show. West and northwesterly is working across the central and eastern chain. Seas here 12 to 16 feet. On the south side, the Pacific Coast, 10 to 13 foot seas expected in the region with winds up to 40 knots. For the west coast, winds should be better tomorrow, and this will continue to be better as we get through the day. Looking for south and westerlies coming through the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta. Southerlies over the ice in Norton Sound, 20 knots. Southerlies up into St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait, 25 knots, 16 foot seas there. That becomes light and northerly as we get into Thursday. Light southwesterlies in Norton Sound and west and northwesterly winds 25 to 30 knots, 16 foot seas around the Pribilofs as we get into Thursday, 10 foot seas in the Kuskokwim Delta. Southerly is blowing offshore for the Beaufort Sea Coast, 25 knots there tops around Point Barrow, 15 foot seas there around, or 15 knot winds around Kaktovik. Southerly is across the Chukchi in the open water, that means 13 to 15 foot seas there on a 35 to 40 knot wind. For Thursday, a little bit more of an onshore push. This is coming up over the ice here. The winds will be strong, 20 to 25 knots, 8 to 9 foot seas in the region. Again, 11 foot seas there around uh, the Bering Strait coast and westerlies over the Beaufort and the ice, 20 to 25. Recapping tonight's weather, a host of winter storm warnings and coastal flood warnings are up and down uh, from the Kuskokwim Delta all the way up to Point Barrow tonight. Most areas across the north and western coast are looking at uh, coastal flood warnings that could bring water up four to as much as six feet above normal high tide. Check with local conditions in your community. For the interior west, it looks like we'll see the potential for one and a half to two feet of snow in some places from Hughes to Ambler and Bettles and south down to Koyukuk. Uh, then as you get into the southwest, the uh, snow amounts go down, but you're still looking at six to as much as 12 to 14 inches of snow in some cases. Blowing snow will be an issue. High winds are expected across the Alaska Range. That threat continues through Wednesday night and into Thursday. Gusts there in the Alaska Range could reach upwards of 65 miles per hour or more. Snow will be moving into south central, and as that moves northward, rain changing to snow uh, will probably go right back again across the Homer Bluffs and into the Sterling Highway. Heavy snow expected for the Susitna Valley. Thanks for watching. Happy Thanksgiving. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.